Hey everyone, welcome back to the Strange Gaming Sphere of weekly video game editorials, news, and gameplay. So, we recently got a closer look at the details of Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil Villa, Resident Evil Pueblo, Resident Evil Vacation Timeshare, and at the world premiere showcase, we finally got a release date of May 7th, 2021. We got a PS5 exclusive demo titled Maiden, and we'll be getting another demo in spring. Capcom's been firing on all cylinders lately with Resident Evil, understandably, given that this year is the series 25th year anniversary. We also got another birthday present from Capcom that may affect the extent to which content creators are able to share Capcom's games with the rest of the internet. Capcom's finally released a set of guidelines for content creators in a sort of scaled down legalese press release. This applies across the board for all their games, Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, and DMC notwithstanding, according to Capcom of Europe, but I'm assuming that these video policies apply across the board for all the regions. According to the article, these guidelines have always been in effect, it's just that they've never been clarified in black and white. So this is a policy clarity intended for content creators specifically, which I appreciate. Unless the clarity is vague enough to be interpreted in a bunch of different ways, which it usually is, or if it's a policy that is waived depending on how big of a content creator you are, which is also usually how it is. Let's play walkthroughs and tutorials on video sites such as YouTube or Twitch. The company says that it's grateful to have such passionate and loyal fans that want to create engaging content, but asks that the following rules be followed. Note that while content creation is very much allowed, there are some pretty strict rules surrounding commercialization, music, hacking, and more. You may make walkthroughs, tutorials, let's plays, speed runs, reviews, reactions, instructionals, and other commentary style videos using our game footage to be shared on YouTube, Twitch, your website, or other video streaming sites. The associated step-by-step -step commentary should be tied to the live gameplay being shown and should provide instructional or educational value or other benefits. So educational benefits, so does that exclude videos talking about how much a game might potentially suck? Uh, am I not able to digress and talk about the game in relation to another non-Capcom game that people should buy and play instead. Game footage posted online. You should not share game footage online without adding your own video or content unless the game console or device permits sharing of game footage. You may not split our game content into components, visual, vocal, in-game elements, and distribute such components as separate content. Not official Capcom video fan content may not be promoted as official Capcom content. Okay, I think the fan content is the crux of these first three bullet points. And it's the mod creators, I'm guessing, that Capcom's targeting here. And this probably applies to the other games, uh, retro and modern. So games on like emulators, fan-made Mega Man games, of which there are many, DMC mods, uh, Resident Evil mods, are probably going to be in the crosshairs as well. Please note that some game soundtracks or songs may not be owned by Capcom, but instead are licensed from an artist or another group. As this varies from game to game, please be aware that music may trigger content flags and potential removal of the video. Yeah, I've gotten my fair share of content ID copyright claims as well. Game soundtracks may not be posted or distributed separately and apart from game footage. Same with protecting their brand by avoiding confusion. This probably also means you can't post videos where you've extracted the music track from the game and post it online as individual tracks separate from the game, since that is basically music piracy and allowing people to hear the music for free instead of buying the official soundtrack. Audience appropriate, all fan created content should be appropriate for the audience of the Capcom games. For example, if you take content for younger audiences and make it objectionable, we reserve the right to take it down. Mods, again, potentially should be obvious. I didn't need to play much of Resident Evil 3 Remake to already imagine the Jill mods that must already exist for that game. Spoilers, any posting or other unauthorized disclosure of game content prior to the game's official release is strictly prohibited. Even after an official game release, spoilers can ruin a fan's experience and we always aim to avoid them. Please be respectful of others and do not deliberately push plot reveals on people who are actively avoiding learning about them. Otherwise, please offer spoiler disclaimers as a courtesy. See, that's interesting. They write, please be respectful and as a courtesy, as if it were a request and not a law, like, you do this and our lawyers will strike you down where you stand. Any posting or other disclosure of unofficially released unauthorized or leaked footage and other leaked content of any kind in any format is strictly prohibited. Any publishing of in-game content from sources such as, but not limited to, leaked contents, leaked copies of a game prior to its official release date will be removed 
we may authorize pre-release content to a select group for media review or other agreed upon business purposes, accompanied by strict guidelines for any content released prior to the official release date. All right, a bit spotty on the other guidelines so far, but I'm really glad they at least added and clarified this one because this is the one thing that is so super annoying about people who get early access to the game before release or if they've managed to get early access to it and end up posting spoilers on YouTube. And I really wish that Square had been just as strict with their spoiler policies for taking down YouTube videos on the same grounds after what happened with Final Fantasy VII Remake. Seven Remake's release date was unfortunately around the time when the pandemic started and supply chain disruptions meant that we had shipping delays. So Katase, being the super awesome guy that he was, tried to get the game out a bit early just to meet deadlines, which resulted in some people like in Australia getting it about 10 days early and posted spoiler videos anyways. Katase didn't even say that you couldn't play the game. He just said, don't post gameplay footage online in order to not spoil it for the fans who've been waiting so long for the game. And sure enough, morons desperate for their five minutes of fame couldn't resist. So this is the early access policy clarification. Adhere and respect embargo dates. And for people saying, if you don't wanna be spoiled, just stay off the internet or don't watch the video if you don't wanna be spoiled. First off, saying that the solution is to stay off the internet, that's just Asinine. And content gets spoiled even in the video thumbnails, so this bullet point I have to agree with wholeheartedly and completely to the letter. Non-commercial use, we do not allow Capcom content and other materials to be used to make money or to gain other financial benefit except through permissible monetization described below, yada yada yada. You may monetize through partner programs and or advertising from YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and other video sharing services. Collecting voluntary contributions such as through Super Chat on YouTube and bits on Twitch is permitted as long as your video is also available for free to the public on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, and other video sharing services. Unfortunately, I'm not at the stage of being able to monetize off my videos just yet, but it seems fairly straightforward. You're allowed to monetize off the ad revenue of streaming of the game content so long as you're not creating a paywall to access that content exclusively, meaning you're monetizing directly through Twitch and YouTube, which makes it freely available to everyone. And if we're going by the letter, gift subbing and donations are valid since your video content of those Capcom games isn't being hidden exclusively behind a paywall. Unauthorized usage, we do not allow usage of or promotion of third-party programs, including hacking, cheating, etc., or devices that circumvent intended protection of Capcom titles. Additionally, we do not allow Capcom content to be uploaded to a platform for which rights have not yet been granted, such as in the creation of Twitch emotes featuring Capcom content. Yeah, I figured it's the mods and the hacks. So before, you could probably get away with posting hacks and mods by claiming ignorance of Capcom's video content guidelines. The guidelines now give them a black and white policy as a bedrock defense for litigation. Although this is likely something that has existed before now, they're probably just dumbing it down now that it's potentially gotten out of hand lately, getting clicks and subs and profiting off of Naked Jill and Ada mods. Uh, same with Koei Tecmo and the Dead or Alive new volleyball DVD, although that franchise I think basically had it coming for decades. Inappropriate content, using Capcom titles to create video and or other content including mods that is illegal, racist, sexist, prejudicial to sexual orientation, sexually explicit, disparaging, promotes hate crimes, or is otherwise offensive is not tolerated. On a case-by-case -case basis, Capcom reserves the right to take down content that is found to be inappropriate or objectionable at our discretion. So I'm assuming this only applies if the game content itself isn't already sexist or racist or disparaging or triggering in that regard. Is screaming out that Nemesis or Mr. X is an annoying cheating bitch when he teleports and unfairly combos you to death, is that sexist? I mean, what if by killing zombies, I'm unknowingly promoting violent hate crimes against zombies? Any posting of video captured of printed or digital books and other printed or digital materials published by Capcom or its licensees, such as, but not limited to, comic books, game strategy guides, collector edition art books, is prohibited. However, you may use Capcom publication in unboxing videos, provided that no specific content inside Capcom publication is displayed in the videos. So it makes sense. Same with posting videos of extracted music tracks. This is meant to protect the revenue stream of their third-party vendors and publications like collector edition books, art books, Edge magazine scans, posting music tracks from separate viable CDs on YouTube. So overall, make actual content. It doesn't seem that complicated, and this isn't really that strict. In fact, some of it sounds more like a request and best practices than actual lawful guidelines. Although something about it feels like a disingenuous attempt at removing the ambiguity that 
already exists around certain commonly done things. So this is kind of boilerplate legalese guidelines without getting legalese basically, like re-uploading a gameplay trailer because it's just a fast and very easy way to gain subscribers and clicks, even though it's technically free advertising, but I'm sure that Capcom's PR department is at a point where it doesn't necessarily see things that way. So for instance, Capcom's already an established company and a few streamers here and there regurgitating their trailers probably isn't gonna add anything significant of value and their PR department finally probably figured out that they're better off just siphoning the bulk of the traffic through their own official channels. And you could sort of make that argument that let's play videos with no commentary at all also sort of fall under this umbrella. Free advertising only makes sense for indie games or games like Fortnite, which are already free to play. And the streamers are bringing in potentially paying customers via loot boxes and microtransactions. Overall though, what I think these guidelines are doing is trying to make a clear distinction between what is the content that Capcom creates versus what is the content that you are creating. Because content creators need to actually create content and not just recycle it for it to be of any real value. And I think that Capcom's finally drawing a line in the sand here, while at the same time acknowledging that content creators are instrumental in selling their games. Like a good chunk of the public usually turns to content creator videos first before actually buying a game and leaks combined with bad Metacritic user reviews can sink a game prematurely, so I'm willing to bet that Capcom isn't willing to take that same kind of gambit that Naughty Dog was forced to deal with with Last of Us 2. But here's the thing, content creators do help companies sell games. These guidelines, at least the monetization part, should have been brought up years ago. In fact, I think the monetization one needs to be laid out in full and not just thumbnail like it is here, because this ultimately, I think, comes down to who's benefiting in terms of the unit sales or the market share. Because some of these policies can run afoul of the fair use doctrine. Like if you use too much unedited footage during a review of a game, but it's a review that Capcom doesn't necessarily agree with, is that grounds for removal? Because Naughty Dog did something similar with The Last of Us 2 reviews and discussions, and those were for videos that didn't even use any footage or music from the game at all. So just like with all other guidelines of the sort, I'm mainly concerned about abuse of loosely interpreted guidelines more than anything, because these are guidelines and not terms of use. But I'm gonna do a bold thing though and give Capcom the benefit of the doubt, at least for now, even though I think that these should have been issued years, if not decades ago, Capcom isn't Nintendo, and I really don't think it's going to be as fiercely guarded with its IPs. Capcom's been doing super well lately. Their 2020 revenue estimates were something like 200 something million, which is up like 16% from the previous year and the increase in game streaming during the pandemic where everyone's shut in with nothing else better to do than to play video games must have clearly had an effect on Capcom's bottom line. The Capcom hack that happened last November, for example, instead of paying the ransomware thieves, they just played into it and capitalized off the publicity that the potential release dates of potential future games brought. That's Capcom indirectly capitalizing off the publicity more or less, and I think they're being smarter and smarter about it. So I think this black and white clarity, number one, isn't so black and white, and number two, is providing a bedrock for potential censorship litigation in the service of Capcom's profits and market share. I'm not necessarily against a game developer doing that, AAA or indie. It's a sort of dance with the devil that Capcom and even other AAA game developers must do these days to survive, what with the game's market being so saturated. I don't think most content creators who are genuinely trying to create content of value need to worry too much. As a law professor of mine once said, 99% of the rules and guidelines were created for 1% of the idiots, and the rest of us unfortunately get caught up in the tide of litigation. The best course of action is probably just create content with as much of yourself in it as possible, which is something that you should be doing anyways. But beyond that, it's the devil in the details and crossing your fingers more or less. As always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you find these videos helpful or entertaining. Dislike if not. And until the next fully guidelines compliant, non-disparaging Capcom video, stay tuned and take care.